please welcome Frank from Basiscom as he talks about practical Qt Lite. If you have been following Qt, uh, you might have known that Qt Lite was introduced with Qt 5.8. Uh, the purpose of Qt Lite was to provide a mechanism of shortening or packing Qt into smaller devices, into devices that do not have a GPU, that requires low memory consumption, and that has flash constraints. Now that's a, that's a long, uh, yeah, that's many things to cover. Unfortunately, we have 25 minutes. And Frank will, is, is going to focus on the practical aspects of Qt Lite, and specifically the flash aspect of Qt Lite. Let's welcome Frank. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, so, practical Qt Lite. What is this going to be about? Um, I will give a short introduction, a bit of orientation, uh, the big picture Qt Lite within the Qt company and what practical Qt Lite is about. That doesn't mean that Qt Lite isn't practical <laughs> overall, but uh, really the aspects I picked out, I will. Um, show some basics how to slim down um, a firmware. Uh, this is something you can already do without going into custom Qt configurations, which can be a bit tricky. Uh, so just to have the basics covered, which can already buy you quite a bit, um, before having a look into Qt Lite itself. And in the conclusion, I will present a, a showcase we did uh, with some real numbers, what can be achieved in terms of size reduction. So, what is Qt Lite? Um, this has been nicely introduced uh, in the Qt uh, in the Qt blog by Niels, with a topic that is really uh, covering a lot of ground. Um, the uh, the short version of it is Qt Lite is about making Qt a viable option for smaller devices to make Qt yeah to make Qt an option on these, uh, meaning that you not necessarily need a GPU that uh, things like uh, the ongoing efforts to uh, slim down the memory consumption of the QML engine, and of course that you, be, that you are able to, de um, to live with less flash storage. And this is, a big this is basically the big picture, the whole story, and practical Qt Lite is a subset for me. Um, I've picked, picked a subset, I only have 20 minutes, more, give or take, so I need to focus a bit, so I picked um, as, a, as a topic how to reduce the footprint of, uh, of Qt in embedded Linux firmwares. Um, this is a focus. Uh, some of the ideas presented can also be applied to mobile applications, for example, where it's also interesting to get down with the package sizes. Um, and it's very much focused on what can be done here and now and not so much on the on the big story that is developing over also over some time. Uh, a short disclaimer: what I won't talk about. So, so nobody is uh, is sorry. Um, I won't talk about overall techniques to reduce the size of embedded Linux firmwares. Um, this is already well documented. If you're interested in that. There are good presentations from the Linux Foundation, from the um, European, um, you know, ELC, European Linux Conference Embedded, something like that. Um, so um, have a look there if you're interested in that. Qt might be a, often a big part of such a firmware, but it's not necessarily the only thing that's making your firmware fat. So have a look there. Um, I also won't talk about overall general purpose techniques to reduce the size of your C, C++ program. This is all well documented. Hit Google for information. So I really want to focus on, on Qt. Um, don't get me wrong, these are still important topics you need, might need to cover to get to your target, but um, outside of scope. So the basics. Before I dive into really using Qt Lite, I want to cover, uh, dwell a bit on, on some basics we should also cover. Um, most of you will know that Qt Lite is, uh, Q 
Qt5 is already much less monolithic than earlier Qt versions like uh, Qt3 or Qt4. There has been quite an effort to modularize things and to turn things into modules and plugins and um, you should leverage this. So make sure to only deploy modules and plugins you actually need. Uh, sounds like cheap advice, but it's often the case that there's that there are things in firmware that you don't actually need. Uh, so check out your, for for example, the run, um, the uh, the process map of your build process. What is actually loaded? on plugins. Uh, do I re really need plugins for three different image formats? Can the guy just agree on one image format? Stuff like this. Um, and also check what is deployed but isn't mapped into your process. That's also cheap targets. Um, so let's, a comp let's be lazy. Let the compiler do some work for you. That's, uh, that's easy, easily done. Um, this is something that uh, is officially supported since Qt 5.9. You can pass the uh, uh, optimize size option to the configure of Qt in release mode. Um, this can already buy you something like 15%. I will present some numbers later on. Um, expect to lose some performance. So uh, what means some? I'm, I'm aware that this is quite vague, um, but this is highly application specific, so you would have to try this out. So, uh, Qt, can also, Qt can also be built as a static library and your application could be linked as a st with the static library. Um, this is, uh, ha has trade-offs, I'm aware of this, um, but it allows the linker to remove unused code more aggressively. Um, this is especially interesting in combination with the LTCG option of the Qt configure, which translates to the FTLO uh, options of CLang and GCC, that's link time optimization. Um, if you go down this, we'll also present some numbers on these towards the end. So if you go down this route, make sure that you have the right license for that. It's most probably the commercial license you need for that. Um, and it's also only a viable option if you have a single Qt application on your device. So if you have a multi-process, a setup with multiple Qt processes, um, that's not most probably not a viable option because Qt is linked into several processes which will blow up the binary size again. So, um, but we are targeting small devices, most probably only one Qt process. So, could be interesting. Pitfalls. Um, this is something I often hear. I, I do, I, I'm doing a static build and my binary just got bigger. Um, so, this is documented, but often overlooked. Uh, be aware that QMake is, has a convenience feature to automatically import all the plugins you need for a static build, and it will also add some initialization code to your application to initialize the static plugins. Um, there are several options to control this. Uh, this one here, the config minus equals import plugins, is the most radical one. It's just disabling this feature. And uh, after you've done this, you would have by hand to really import all the plugins you need and to call the initialization routines. Um, this is well documented in the Qt documentation. Just Google for uh, Qt static plugins and you will find the information. So you can combine all these uh, options for Qt build. So configure static, LTCG, optimize size numbers later on, uh, this has an interesting effect. And especially for, uh, it's also cheap advice, but often overlooked, especially for, uh, for static build, make sure to strip all unneeded sections. So especially for static builds that can buy you a megabyte or two. Uh, one last basic. It's a it's a small trick. Qt has the Qt resource system. It's a it's a good idea to use it anyways because it uh, allows you to. Uh, it's very portable. So instead of deploying all your QML resources into um, into the file system, you can embed them into your binary or into a into a shared library. And QRC has a compression option and. An interesting trick is for stuff that it's easy to compress, like QML files, you could 
make a special QRC where you crank up the compression level. Might save also a bit, depends on how much QML you have on your target. With these, I, I close up on the basics and we have a look at actually Qt, actual Qt Lite. <laughs> but it's, uh, you will see later on when I present the numbers that the basics are not something to, to overlook. So, Qt Lite so far. Um, Qt Lite consists of two parts. Um, on the one side, you have changes to the build system and the source code of Qt. This is all done in the open, that's open source, part of the regular Qt. And it's built on top of the new configure system that was introduced last year. Um, I can't go into detail there because of the time frame I have. It's also well documented. Uh, Lars gave an extensive talk at the QtCon 2016. So I can, I would encourage you to, to have a look at, at this video if you're really interested in all the details of the new configure system. So take away Qt Lite is built on this new configure system and it introduces the ability to, to define features and dependencies between these features. This is a big improvement over older things. Uh, Qt allowed for a very long time to compile things out, the famous Q feature .txt, where you can could select stuff which would be compiled out via the preprocessor. This was always very cumbersome and very error prone. Um, this really improves by allowing you to define dependencies between stuff and um, that's the base for Qt Lite. And it's controlled via the Qt configure system, the regular one, or via the Qt configuration tool. And this is something that is part of the Qt for device creation offering, which is basically giving you a hand when uh, doing complex configurations. So you can, you have a UI, I will show this later on, which you can use to, um, to configure a Qt Lite build. And we will have a look at both sides, what you can do with the open source tools and what you can do with the uh, um, Qt configuration tool. In any way, uh, if you haven't built Qt yourself, always consume just the from the installer or from your regular firmware. Uh, to get started, get the sources, either from the installer or from Git. I would prefer from Git. And configure your build. This is the input for either process, either if you're working purely with a command line or if you're using uh, the Qt configuration tool, you need a pre-configured build. This is documented in the Qt documentation how you do this, and it's a starting point in either case. So get this prepared. I will have a look at the command line, working with the command line only. Uh, well, those of you ha who haven't compiled Qt themselves, there's a tool called configure. You call to configure your Qt build, no surprise here. Uh, but it gained recently some interesting options. Um, one of these is the dash dash list features, um, which is basically giving you a list of all the features your build knows about. So it will go through the whole build system of Qt, collecting these feature and dependency definitions and uh, present it to you on a, on, in, a, in a list on the command line. Um, you can then pick, pick a feature. They have names. A feature could be um, cuticle controls to sprites. But I know that's cut oh, yeah, cuticle controls to sprites or particles. That would be features. And then you can say uh, no feature, uh, dash, dash, no feature, dash, um, particles to get rid of the particles. And um, that sounds easy enough. Um, unfortunately, it's a bit more tricky because features depend on other features. And so you often, if you're, it's easy if you're removing things on the outside that are leaf nodes in the dependency tree. Um, that of course requires you to know what are leaves. Um, well, it gets more tricky if you, if you remove something more involved, uh, then you end up having to resolve questions like, where, have my, where has my printer dialog gone? I just removed the uh, abstract button item. Th that can be really tricky if you're not uh, familiar with the, Q with the overall structure of the Qt internals. 
Um, a colleague of mine, Stefan, has, uh, who is very familiar with the Qt build system, uh, has picked this apart. We have, a, we have a nice blog post about this you can have a look at, um, which is a little bit expa expanding on, the, on this slide um, I'm presenting here. So, the Qt configuration tool. It's also, um, that's part of Qt for device creation, documentation uh, you can find freely on the web. And um, it is basically giving you a UI that you can put, uh, start on top of a pre-configured build that will pick up your build configuration and present it in that, uh, in this tree view here. It, um, unlike the command line list features, it will group features into, co into common, common subgroups. And it will give you also some information, uh, what uh, dependencies, uh, what features it requires. So um, you have an idea there, and you can just set a, set a checkbox or remove it. Um, it will signal you things that have changed due to a dependency with this uh, by making it uh, bold. So. You set a checkbox and things get bold. You know, okay, these have been disabled due to dependency. Um, that's quite nice already. Um, what's not, what could be improved is there are no reverse dependencies. So I cannot, uh, I don't know what other features depend on the dame, uh, date time added. So I would have to try this out before to get an idea. So this would be very nice to have. On, uh, and it's also if you are doing large changes, you easily lose track. After some point, everything becomes bold, and there's little that's not so helpful there. Um, one thing that was announced, but I haven't found it yet, was to have um, configuration configuration presets for typically for typical application cases on which you can build on. I, I assume it was announced, I assume it's not yet there. So I hope. So in either case, either way you came, you have to do run the build now. So you just do configure, redo, make, make install, and you're good to go. In theory. <laughs> um, Qt Lite was introduced with 5.8. I really would recommend using 5.9 with the latest X possible, because in 5.8 there were a lot of build issues to resolve by hand. This has vastly improved with, uh, with 5.9. Um, you also have to make sure to disable uh, tools, examples, and tests, because they are not covered by the Qt Lite configuration. Um, that's also not very prominently documented, so disable them. Also, this it's also not documented. Disable the pre-compiled headers. This is a experience. This is my experience that you will vastly improve your chances to have a successful build if you disable the pre-compiled headers. Still, be compiled. Uh, be prepared to resolve some build issues by hand. It's often not the really not really hard. It's often just moving a macro a bit around. But sometimes there is something to do. Um, so, and with that, after the practical part, I'm com coming to the conclusion. I will present a short showcase of ours, uh, which we used um, as a testing ground for a stripped-down uh, Qt. This is something uh, we presented at the Embedded World last year, I think. Um, it's a front-end for, uh, for a software-defined radio. So you have, um, this is done with, uh, with Qt Quick 2, Qt Quick Controls 2, and uh, it works. You have, um, there's a device called Hack RF, which is basically a software defined radio with a USB interface. You can attach it to an embedded Linux device, for example. And um, we've built basically a, a front end where you can, um, go to the frequency band, tune in, change parameters on the device. There are different visualizations, uh, this waterfall diagram. And, um, well, we also wanted to use Qt Multimedia, so we uh, also did um, FM radio decoding in software, so you could use it. It was a very complicated way to listen to radio. 
also, and this we used as a showcase for um, for a cute light configuration. How far can we strip this down? Um, you might wonder why I did this on x86. Uh, the, I will also present some numbers on ARM. Um, this was mostly due to being able to quick, quickly iterate, which was much easier there. Um, so we started out with 26 megabytes, nearly 27 megabytes. And um, this here is a default configuration. So like Qt is built with the dependencies it has detected. And this is a minimal configuration we created by hand. And here we applied a number of these basic techniques, like uh, creating an optimized size build, which already gives you 20% in this case. That might vary for your case. Um, creating a static build in combination with a static build and in combination with the uh, build time optimization build, which already brings you down to 50%. So this is, you, this is something you can get away with only the basics. Um, interesting question uh, for the static. We are mixing here static and dynamic builds. How did we count these? The, uh, the dynamic builds is the uh, programs, uh, the program binary size plus everything Qt modules and plugins, but no second or third level dependencies. The static build is just the static build that contains application binary and all things Qt. So this is kind of comparable and we also did this for, for Qt Lite configuration. So this already gets you for the default case that is not changed in any way, not static, not optimized size compiled. It gets you also 20%. And if you apply all these options, you end up with a binary with around 40% of the original size, which is quite nice to have something like around 10 megabytes. And we already also did this comparison on IMX6. Um, there we started out at 22 megabytes. You might wonder why, 20, why is it uh, smaller than the other case. Uh, on this Yocto image, there are less dependencies that get pulled in by, by default. And um, you also need less dependencies for an EGLFS, which, which was used as a display stack here, compared to the X stack we had on the other side. Um, and the results are comparable. You get down to 40%, something like that, um, resulting in a binary with uh, nine megabytes. So we haven't really, there was still room to get further down, but we haven't, we didn't cripple the application. So we didn't remove the queue pro process and replace things with low level C stuff. There was, we could have gone down a little bit further, I guess. And um, with that, I come to room for improvements. Uh, I already mentioned it would be really nice to have uh, pre-configured pre uh, known to work presets in the Qt Lite and the Qt configuration tool. That would be a great help to get started. Um, it would be nice to have um, a little bit more help in resolving dependencies, they, the uh, what is there is a good start. But if you're doing complex stuff, it you, you start to write down things with uh, on paper or on an editor window. Um, it would also be nice to have CE support for the Qt Lite configurations. Which ones? Uh, there are a lot of permutations, of course. <laughs> um, I, 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 can, I guess this is not really handleable with a CE, but uh, if there are presets, it would of course be nice to have uh, uh, CE support for these presets. So in a conclusion, a smaller Qt is possible. Um, you can often reduce the size of your application quite a bit, um, even with relatively simple stuff by Doing, letting the compiler do some work. Um, Qt Lite provides the base to get further down to create custom builds. Um, there is currently some Qt knowledge required to really resolve issues and to decide what goes in, what goes out. Um, but it's the base for even smaller builds and I'm looking forward to using Qt on smaller and smaller devices.
Thank you, Frank. Uh, maybe we have time for just one question. If there um, are... I'm, I'm, I'm also on the outside after the talk and willing to answer questions if there's... Uh... Perfect. Thank you, Frank.